The Munsters was a comedy classic that transcends time. It's almost as popular today as it was when it originally aired. And in this video, I'm going to take you on a journey through the history and origins of this amazing sitcom. But first, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can stay up to date on all our videos. Produced by the same company that brought us Leave It to Beaver, The Munsters was a satirical sitcom made to directly compete with ABC's The Addams Family for CBS from September 24, 1964 until it came to an end on May 12, 1966. The series was made of 70 episodes with two seasons and starred Fred Gwynn, Yvonne DiCarlo, Al Lewis, Pat Priest, Beverly Owen, and Butch Patrick. The costumes and appearances of the family members, other than Marilyn, were based on the classic monsters of Universal Studios films from the 1930s and 1940s. You see, Universal owned the copyrights to most of the classic monsters such as Dracula, the Wolfman, and Frankenstein's monster. The studio had been running their old classic horror films on television since the 1950s and found that there was still an impressive audience for these decades-old monster movies. When Conley and Mosher pitched the series idea, CBS executives knew that they had one advantage that ABC lacked with the Addams Family, the ability to use the Universal Monster characters. In the series pilot, Lily was actually Phoebe and looked nearly identical to Morticia Adams. Phoebe was portrayed by Joan Marshall. Because of the similarities, CBS worried that Phoebe was too similar to Morticia, and so they recast her while also changing her appearance and name. The new Mrs. Munster was now Lily, played by Yvonne DiCarlo. When Yvonne DiCarlo was cast to replace Joan Marshall, Tensions ran hot on the set as Fred and Al were worried that due to Yvonne being a serious film actress, her acting style wouldn't fit well with theirs. However, as time has shown, they were dead wrong. The series was originally supposed to be made in color, but was ultimately filmed in black and white to save money and resemble the black and white monster films. When production began on the series, producers looked no further than Car 54 Where Are You stars Fred Gwynn and Al Lewis, who perfected their comedy timing on the series from 1961 to 1963 and had become close friends. The family of the Munsters was made of Herman, who was a Frankenstein-like mortician and head of the household, Lily, who was the vampire matriarch of the family, Grandpa was Lily's father, who happens to be a vampire, mad scientist, and part-time sorcerer, I guess you would call it? <laughs> There's also Eddie, who's Lily and Herman's half-vampire, half-werewolf son. Then we have Marilyn, who's the Munsters' niece, being the daughter of Lily's sister and only normal member of the Munsters' clan. Grandpa Munster's full name was actually Vladimir Dracula, Count of Transylvania, and is said to be 378 years old and having been married 167 times, and even though his wives are all dead, he still keeps in touch with them. In the series, the Munsters live at 1313 Mockingbird Lane in the city of Mockingbird Heights, a fictional suburb in California. The running gag of the series is that the family, while decidedly odd, consider themselves fairly typical working class people of the era. In series canon, Herman was created in 1815 by Dr. Victor Frankenstein and has a twin brother named Charlie. After Herman left Germany, he was adopted by the Munsters, a noble family living in Shroudshire, England. He eventually moved to Transylvania, where he met Lily Dracula, who has two siblings, a werewolf brother and a sister who gave birth to Marilyn. In 1865, Herman and Lily were married. They soon moved to the United States with Grandpa, and Herman joined the army to fight in World War II. Marilyn is the niece of the Munsters clan, being the daughter of Lily's sister, even though she's referred to as Marilyn Munster. Her real name is actually Marilyn Mundane, and in other spin-offs, Marilyn Hyde. In 1960, the Munsters was cancelled around the same time as the Addams Family due to the popularity of Batman. However, they did end on a high note with the made-for-TV movie Munster Go Home. In the film, the Munsters go to England to claim Munster Hall after the death of an old relative. The film starred the original black and white series cast with the exception of Pat Priest, who was replaced by Universal Pictures by its teenage contract player Debbie Watson. Priest commented in the A&E biography documentary produced on the Munsters that she was devastated at the producer's decision not to include the then 29-year-old actress. The film gave the fans a chance to see the Munsters in color during their original 1960s era run, 
for the first and only time. The film also featured the famous Dragula, souped up dragster hot rod Munster's car, which is where Rob Zombie came up with the idea for his hit song of the same name. However, the car used in the Dragula music video was not in fact the Dragula, but instead the Munster's coach. As of 2012, this film has only been released on DVD in the USA. Over time, the Munsters found lasting success in reruns through syndication. An attempt was made in 1973 to bring back the Munsters in animated form via a one-hour special for ABC entitled Mini Munsters as part of the ABC Saturday Superstar movie, but failed to get picked up for series. In the animated movie, only Al Lewis reprised his role. In 1981, another made-for-TV movie entitled The Munster's Revenge reunited three of the original cast members, Fred Gwynn, Yvonne DiCarlo, and Al Lewis. In the movie, the Munsters pay a visit to the Wax Museum, where they take a picture of themselves standing next to their wax replicas. But when the family leaves, the statues in the museum, which are actually robots, mysteriously come to life and begin wreaking havoc across the city. Herman and Grandpa are then arrested for various crimes they did not commit and try to clear their names in time for the Halloween celebration at the Munster home. In 1988, the sitcom The Munsters Today hit television and syndication and ran from October 8, 1988 until May 25, 1991. It starred John Shook as Herman, Lee Merriweather as Lily, Jason Marsden as Eddie, Hilary Van Dyke as Marilyn, and Howard Morton as Grandpa. In 1995, the Munsters were recast for a new made-for-TV film, which Fox would air on Halloween night, entitled Here Come the Munsters. The movie starred Edward Herman as Herman Munster, Veronica Hamill as Lily, Robert Morse as Grandpa, Christine Taylor as Marilyn, and Matthew Batucci as Eddie. It also paid homage to the original series by including a cameo of the four remaining original Munsters actors during a restaurant scene. Sadly, Fred Gwynn passed away just two years earlier from complications due to pancreatic cancer, eight days short of his 67th birthday. 1996 saw another Munsters holiday movie with the Munsters Scary Little Christmas. It stars Sam McCurry as Herman, Ann Magnuson as Lily, Bug Hall as Eddie, Sandy Barron as Grandpa, and Elaine Hendricks as Marilyn. In 2004, it was announced that Universal had negotiated a deal with the Wayans Brothers to produce a contemporary film adaptation of the Munsters that would be PG-13 and yet would remain true to the original and not be an all-black adaptation. Sadly, the film never materialized as Universal announced in 2012 the property was being developed for television as Mockingbird Lane, which aired its pilot on October 11, 2012. However, it wasn't picked up for series. Mockingbird Lane starred Jerry O'Connell as Herman, Portia de Rossi as Lily, Charity Wakefield as Marilyn, Mason Cook as Eddie, and Eddie Izzard as Grandpa. In 2017, it was announced that Seth Meyers would be developing a modern-day interpretation of the series, which would take place in Brooklyn, New York. With the popularity of the Munsters, why have their later projects been so forgettable and not very well received? The fact is, unlike the Addams Family, the Munsters aren't just the characters, but the actors as well. When it came to the Addams Family, each generation had their own specific Addams Family. But when it came to the Munsters, the actors were so beloved that no one else could fill their shoes. When we think of Herman and Grandpa, we picture Fred and Al. That's just the way it is. However, one person came incredibly close to filling Al Lewis's shoes in the Gremlins 2 The New Batch movie when Robert Prosky was cast as Grandpa Fred. As he looked and sounded so much like Al Lewis, it was mesmerizing. So this got me thinking. If we could have a Munster series today that was true to the original, who should we cast? For Herman, we would need someone who's got great comedic timing and isn't afraid to be silly and childish. We also need someone who's tall. Fred Gwynn was 6'5 at the time he played Herman Munster, so we need someone pretty close in height, so his platforms don't have to be huge. For this role, I chose Nathan Fillion. Standing in at 6'2", Fillion has proven his comedic and acting chops with roles in Castle, The Rookie, Firefly, and Robot Chicken. I think he'd be the perfect modern Herman. For the role of Lily, we need someone who won't look out of place in gothic dresses and makeup. We also need someone who can be loving, but also command a room and feels like a matriarch. She also needs to be attractive. For this role, I chose Modern Family's Julie Bowen. In a perfect world, I would give Grandpa a sex change as a character and make it Grandma. Simply because there's one person I think would be perfect to fill Al Lewis's shoes, but it's a she, and that would be Betty White. However, no matter how much we love Betty White, we can't change characters like that and stay true to the original. For this reason, and if he'd actually do a television role, I would choose Bill Murray as Grandpa. 
There's just no one else who could fill the role unless we turn Grandpa into Grandma. Ricky Gervais might be able to pull it off, but ultimately I feel his style of humor would be too dark for the series. As for Eddie, I feel there's really only one choice, August Maturo. Then there's Marilyn. We need a girl next door type that can be funny, but with more of a low-key comedy style. For this role, I'd choose Sony Nicole Bringus to round it out. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button right there so you stay up to date on all things geek culture. Also, go ahead and check out one of these two playlists on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched. I'm Shannon for Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks.